Um, so I wanted to start by thanking you all for coming. Um, Dottie Piercy was supposed, to, was supposed to be doing this session, and I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna leave that unplugged, and then when I need it, I'm gonna put it back in. Mr. Piercy on Twitter is his uh, Twitter handle to follow. I will put it in my slide deck. I do some shout outs to him. Um, he is amazing with the geo tools and just staying up to date. That's kind of his, his gig. Um, he is a fifth grade teacher actually in Eminence, um, Kentucky, in Buddy Bear School District. So good follow if you're thinking about, hey, I have more questions about this kind of stuff. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer to, but he's a, a great follow and a great resource too. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, thanks for coming early on a Tuesday morning. Uh, I appreciate this. I know it's super hard to get out of your districts um, and be away from your day to day for two days. How many of you were here yesterday? I saw Buddy the keynote and took in some sessions. Well, thank you for coming for two days. Um, our goal is always to have you be able to find some stuff, learn some things that you can take back and use with your um, colleagues as well as use with your kids. So thanks for taking the, the time to come. Um, we appreciate it. Um, and that's why we like to put on this event because we know this is sometimes some, some of our only opportunity to get some new learning to take back. So um, thank you, first of all, for coming. Uh, as I started looking at, um, I was I started my career as a fourth grade teacher, and I was super lucky because I got to teach um, social studies, and I did not have to teach science ever. But I was like, I'm not a science person at all, so that's why I have good friends who are science people. Um, so I loved fourth grade social studies. We did 50 states and capitals, and we got out the maps and. The kids just loved it, and I thought, you know what, for me as a teacher, I'm like, this is a real world application. Who doesn't want to go somewhere? Um, and who has, hasn't looked at a map? Um, I saw on Twitter last week, though, somebody said, um, tweeted a picture, um, or uh, somebody had a map up, and her son had said, oh, look, dad printed Google Maps um, because he had a paper map up. He thought they printed Google Maps, and I thought that was kind of funny. Um, so maps are kind of with us all the time. Um, and just who's traveled somewhere? Who's used Google Maps to get somewhere and just personally? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Google Maps and then Google Earth and some of the geo tools. And then I'm going to mention some other geo tools that you might not be aware of. If you go to the session resources on the iTech page, that will should take you to um, a list of all the digital learning team from Grant Wood's sessions. If you want to go to this slide deck directly, um, the link is down here at the bottom. It's just tinyurl.com slash Stacy Geo. It is not case sensitive. So that will have resources. Um, I did just, I'm kind of disclaimer here, um, put this together in the last 24 hours. Um, since Donnie is not here because it's such great stuff. So I will be updating this and improving. Um, so if you have any questions, comments, um, let me know. Um, my name is Stacey Beamer. I'm the coordinator of digital learning at Brentwood ADA in Cedar Rapids. I'm part of an amazing team of uh, digital learning consultants who support our 32 districts in that area. And so what we do um, and what they're doing is working to support teachers all the time. So if you have questions, feel free to send me an email, um, send a tweet. That's kind of what we do is help educators. So more than happy to help. Um, I know everybody else's day to day is busy. So if you have a quick question, um, feel free to shoot it my way. So this summer, um, I had the opportunity to go out to Mountain View and spend a day, or spend three days, with um, 80 educators on the Google Geo tools with some folks in the Google Earth uh, Geo team. And this is how they opened it that day for us with this video. I don't know how many people have seen this video. Oops.
Uh, I hadn't either. And we took a challenge then and said, okay, let's watch that video again. Um, how many different modes of transportation did you see in that video? Watch it again. So how, how do people get around? So from just what you remember, how what are the modes of transportation that you could have seen in that video? Walking. Walking. Bicycling. Bicycling. Cars. Cars. Buses, trains. So talking about transportation all over the world, the different ways people go from one location to another. So um, another thing that we talked about did another brainstorm popcorn is how many of those locations did you remember or did you recognize? So lists. Where were some places that you saw that you knew? It's like I know that that's that location. Where? Okay. Stonehenge. Stonehenge. The Louvre. The that's the one I'm like, oh, got that one, I'm kind of fixated on the Louvre. Uh, the Colosseum. Colosseum in Rome, yeah. So all these just different things, so now we've hit some like social studies topics here that those are kind of clear. Um, but just by watching that video and thinking about the perspective, if you wanted to talk about weather in all these different locations, you're outdoors for all these, or not all of them, some of the pictures are inside, but as you start looking at weather and um, climate, so a lot of things you can do just with your perspective on a one minute video. One of the neat things that John Bailey, another good follow on Twitter, is on the Google Earth team. Um, John talked about was, he is, was an educator, um, still is an educator, but was in a classroom teacher, but also um, has gone all over the world traveling. Um, he was one of the original folks that did, I don't know if anybody remembers Google Glass, and one of the videos was um, through, I think it was over in Sweden or somewhere, and he rode the bike and had Google Glass and he streamed it back and had uh, conversations with his classroom. Um, so now he's since joined the Google Earth team and has gone on these expeditions, like not just expeditions, but real world expeditions, all over the world with a camera, like GoPro cameras to capture this. He went bobsledding. Um, in Antarctica um, and wore the pack on his back and captured images to build street view. So he's um, an educator on this Google EDU team and just the way he talks about different locations and sharing it with kids and everyone's location helps tell their story. So he frames a lot of it with, hello world, what's my story here? What does this image have to do with you and how, how does it tell your story? Um, the first Google tool that we're going to talk about um, is Google Earth. How many people have played with Google Earth before? Do you know that there's been over 8 billion downloads in the last 10 years? I think Google Earth just turned 10 years old. 8 billion downloads of Google Earth since the beginning. Um, what is significant about that? Who knows the summer? What got released? <coughs> That's more than the, people, the number of people in the world. More than the number of people in the world, but now, too, it's online. You don't need to download it anymore. So now that, eight, I mean, that number of downloads is almost, it's going to stop right there at that number, more than likely, because we can get to it on a Chromebook. Um, we can get to it on, an, uh, um, actually, mobile devices, I prefer a Chromebook or a laptop. So now Google Earth is online. So you have the power of the updates and the maps. I started to probably a year ago, I was not using Google Earth. Um, not that I use it on a day-to-day -day basis, but I'm like, you know, everything I was using in Google Earth, I was probably doing in maps. So why, what's the difference in going to Google Earth? Why would I want to do that? So who has used Google Earth with kids? You have, how have you used it? How have you used it? Uh, we went on a uh, find this, uh, much like the video, find this like natural phenomenon somewhere in the world and give me its geo coordinates and then we'll talk about absolute location. Absolute location, so you use longitude latitude yeah. coordinates. How else do people use Google Earth? We did the I'm feeling lucky and just went and looked at differences in architecture, landscape, all that in different parts of the world. Yes, she's, I'm feeling lucky. Science literature when they're reading about a place they've never been, just jumping onto Google Earth to look at the actual place. So tying it to literature, we're talking about setting of a story. What does it actually look like? I used it for 
<clears throat> to show urban and rural and urban and rural. Mm -hmm. So in the perfect examples, we've got kiddos here in Iowa that live in a rural environment and then don't understand like dropping them in downtown Chicago with concrete and no grass. Um, that's a, it's totally different. Yeah. Um, there's a couple programs called GeoGuessr and GeoSetter, and yeah. so I've showed them GeoGuessr, and they'd love to play that, and then they create their own on GeoSetter. So what's what's GeoGuessr? Do you want to so, explain what it is? <clears throat> GeoGuessr is, I mean, it's kind of like a game where you, when you open it up, um, you're given, you're instantly taken to a location on Google Earth, and you have to try to guess where the location is just on what you can visually see and then um, you, I think it gives you five different um, locations and then you get a score based on how close you can get and like the students really really love it when they get as close as possible and so they have to take all kinds of um, thinking they have to use their thinking skills to think about the context of what side of the road is the car driving on. Is the are the signs in a foreign language? What kind of um, you know what kind of topography is there? Um, and and they really they really enjoy it. But then also learning that they can create their own with GeoSetter, and then having everybody play theirs um, and trying to figure it out is one that they really enjoy. Yeah, there's so many different ways like in how you frame it, what you're looking for. Um, there is not a way to, as a teacher, to get them started. You could use GeoCenter to create your own and get them started. But the nice thing about GeoGuessr is um, it's kind of a random. You don't know right. where you're going to get plopped down. Exactly. What I've done is, and hopefully I have my share settings, right? But at the bottom of the slide, there's a curricular do you guys see it if you pull up the slide deck over here on the left where my little bar is? Here it is. Curricular brainstorm link. What I did is I put together a collaborative Google Doc. So as we're talking and you have some ideas on how you use these tools, if you use Google Earth or if you would write those two tools and link them to that doc and just write a sentence or so to describe how you've used it. And if it's all grade levels, copy paste, but um, if not, just throw that idea of what grade level you've done it with, and it's worked successfully. Because some of the stuff, like GeoGuessr, I don't necessarily think you'll be doing it with, like, PK2. But by the time you get up to easy with sixth, sixth grade. Thank you. So y'all look at it, y'all come in there. Okay. So, some of the new things with Google Earth that I just want to make sure I um, call out. If you come in here, the search is still the same, so you can search Google Earth. This is the biggie that I really like, is Google Voyager. So Google partnered with National Geographic, well, Google Voyager, maybe low. <coughs> oh, I'm just, I'm just being patient. Um, Google partnered with National Geographic and some other companies to actually build in content for educators. So, if you think about how many folks have done Google Expeditions before, use the Expedition in that sense, and I know there's people in here that have there raising their hands, but I won't call you out. Um, so, think about this as a nice supplement to that. Uh, it's vetted content. Um, but if you scroll down, there is a specific education guide. Um, so, they have some specifically for education. So, if you go, let's start one. And I think this is kind of an interactive like um, encyclopedia. So it's going to layer um, video. There is some that's not loading, but that's okay. So let's explore. It's going to layer video, images, and text for students. So any, we're going to talk about tour builder, but these are almost pre-made tours as they go. So you can look around it's going to give you facts about that location, different scenes, and then we'll go to the next location. This location, um, Franz, what was there? Well, yeah, yeah, this first place. There's a video here that I can watch and learn more about that. 
Um, so a lot of content built in, and I know it's going to be quality content because uh, Google's partnered with some great vendors and captured this image, imagery and some videos. How many people have explored Voyager since it's come out? Yeah. How are you, anybody had a chance to use it yet with kids? Just got released this summer. Um, they are adding to this content, so I would keep looking. Um, and if you're looking for additional content, you know, for something a picture for example, what you're looking for exactly, keep looking because the Voyager stuff is coming. So Stacy, I just got blocked, so my admin has to enable this. So good point, because that's why I put a star on this one. Oh, and I didn't realize. So Google Earth, yes. Um, it does. At this point in time, it does have to be enabled in your domain. So you can go in in your public account right now and play with it. Um, but yes, it does need, and that's why I put a star. The ones with the star, those are actually the titles are hyperlinked right to the tool. If they have a star, they have to be enabled by your admin. Thanks, Emily. Um, Google Earth, um, just I told this in my session yesterday, I mentioned it with a disclaimer. It got added to the dashboard now for admins to turn on for kids. Um, they missed the deadline for the EULA by like a week. So it is totally compliant. It can be turned on for all kids to use, but they missed the deadline. So it will be turned on. I mean, it'll be approved EULA official um, for under 13 um, in the next calendar year. So. How does it work online with iPads? Because we've used the app. Well, I've, I mean, I've used the app when I was when I was in the classroom. I used the, uh, the app, and it was fine. Does it any difference with the online environment? Is it going to require? Do you know by chance? Um. Yeah, I think you. I'm using the app right now, and it's pretty much the same as the web version. Okay. I just updated it recently. Yeah. Okay. I think on the iPad it still prompts you to download the app if you go to. So do the app. Okay. Yeah. I would do the app. On yeah, I, I figured as much. Doesn't You're work not using online. the website, right? Doesn't work on the website. So I'm following along with you and doing all the same things. It works. That's why I love whoever. Um, Nat and friends, um, there's a video here about the 3D imagery too. So know that that 3D imagery has been approved um, in Google Earth. But she has a nice video that I that was shared with me um, explaining Google Earth's 3D view and how that was all created and what that means. Let me jump back to Earth. I just get lost in this. Um, the other thing, somebody spoke about, um, I feel lucky. So this, I'm feeling lucky, will just jump you anywhere in Google Earth and again bring you in and drop you in that location. Um, the activity I don't think we're going to have time for. What we did, um, we were able to say, okay, where are we going to travel today? I feel lucky, and then we'll do our research on that location for today. If you notice, there's the slides over here on the right that's going to take you to some research. This is not the difference between just the I feel lucky and one of the major differences and the Voyager is Voyager is like vetted content, not that Wikipedia isn't always good content, but it's not primary source kind of stuff. So just know that these fact sheets are going to be um, like a web search content about that site, wherever you are. Okay. My places, you can bookmark places within Google Earth. Um, one of the things that, and I I would be more than happy to show you and point you to resources on how to do this. One of the things though, that people liked about Google Earth versus Google Maps is kids could build the tours, right, with the KML files. KML is the airline. So the KML files. Um, so if, did anybody ever do that? <clears throat> build the tours and have them fly around from one place to another for video stuff. So you can actually build those KML files and upload them now into Google Earth in the web version. That's something you couldn't do in Maps. So that's why people still hung around with um, Google Earth. 
I do have some steps on how to. It's a little complicated. Um, there's just a couple extra steps. If you want to gather content and build it in Google Maps and then add that layer onto Google Earth, there is not a way at this point in time to add multiple layers. And that was one of the things. So if you have one group of kids talking about some battles of the Civil War in the North and then in the South, and then you want to layer them on top of each other, you can't do that yet at this time. That doesn't apply to everybody. Oh, guess what? I'm supposed to be an iTech. So now what I would like you to do, I'm going to give you three minutes to turn to somebody around you, because you've been sitting passively, to talk about curricular connections, how have you used or could you use Google Earth um, or Voyager, and or Voyager, with kids, and then record something on the dock. So meet an elbow partner. you got two minutes and 42 seconds. <laughs> And please write something down in your personal hand at least once. Yeah. 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 with the best of them, but the ideas that come in the room, I think, are pretty powerful. Um, so, oh, that's next door. Um, so, what were some ideas that you came up with? Yep, it was quiet in here for three minutes. You don't see any, any in Iowa or Denmark, right? We don't know what it's like to live on the ocean. It's like a lot.
their their strategy yeah. is going to be a lot different than it would be here. Here. I would plan rag ride for next year. <laughs> what kind of route would be there? Well, that would be dependent to follow the pattern that that they choose. You know, it's if it's the northern the northern scheme like last year it was the middle to the state the southern part of the state and then have the kids go and plan the route and then do the, like overnight descriptions of the town that on a little sheet. yeah and then Please. submit it to the folks and say here you go here's a recommended route from yeah. Iowa and I have some idea I've done that so I'll also share a link with some like prompts and stuff from the teacher already so I'll put there's, that on and there. there's a they actually you can go online and you can find all of the the rag bright routes from the past and follow the pattern you know but what a great way to talk about like Iowa and yeah. say why did it go through this town these towns right. what was the route and just what landmarks how the dis I, okay so now I'm starting to brainstorm like cross curricular you have to cover this many you know miles a day based on what speed what the dis like the terrain pass. the terrain is important elevation yeah, elevation change the population of the consider. overnight towns like making sure the town ha is large enough to support that many people so we're talking about population industry even the town might be big enough but is there enough you but then know, like last year was, then like last year they stayed in a town of like 2000 right. instead of like a town of like tw 10 to 14 or above That's so like why are there anomalies sometimes in that well it's because north Iowa was really spread out right so anyway yeah and then if you have to do that, what's that one day where they do 100 miles? What would that route be? On which, in which day would you do that century ride or whatever they The call. vendor possibilities talk about economic development, like how the towns bring. <laughs> do you want to come up here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's just, it's nice to hear these ideas. I, I'm not, I don't claim to be an expert. I just want to start the conversations, and this is where it's fun, is just to start brainstorming and starting to draw all those cross-curricular connections. What an awesome, authentic project. Oh. Um, maps. So like I said, Google Earth is awesome. One of the original tools and then we get Google Maps um, that I use in my car all the time. Uh, how many folks have used maps online? Um, well, if you had Chromebooks and you didn't have Google Earth, maps was kind of your go-to. Um, talking about it, just some key things that I want to talk you're starting to talk about. Um, Ragbri and different planning. Remember in maps some of the nice things other than just directions. If you click on the three lines, you can turn, like he said, to that terrain. You can get the satellite imagery, the traffic information. So as we're starting to talk about uh, our have conversations, um, about like your community and building, think about traffic implications um, in some larger towns. Your places, this stuff, I would say look at it in your personal account. Um, so notifications, the stuff that you can turn on to say, hey, I need to leave by a certain time. So Google knows your location. Um, and if you want to share your location with people, um, if you create a map, you can share or embed that map uh, on your website. But one thing I just want to tell people, I did not know about this. I learned about this, the timeline thing this summer. Has anybody seen this? Maps? It's kind of creepy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it'll tell you where you've been. It tells you exactly where you've been. Okay. And if you have geolocated any of your pictures, your those will show up in that timeline as well. <laughs> So here's all the places I've been, um, and let's go to, I don't know, Monday, I was in three places. Um, it will show, you can see all the places I've been and the photos that I took. Um, good, bad, ugly of this, I mean, it just depends. For me, it doesn't bother, it doesn't bother me. Um, but some people it does, so just knowing that this is there and you can turn that off um, or hide some of this. But it is kind of cool when you back out of that and I just look at the timeline of everywhere I've been. Um, right now, if you notice, that's locked, so only I see it. But looking back in time, it's like, oh, my family went on vacation a year, you know, a year ago and we were in Mexico, so my pictures are there from that event. Kind of a neat way to look at it versus just looking through photos. I can actually.
actually put the location, connect that location, oh, I was there. And, but that's when your Google Photos are geotagged as well and have location attached. Is that one new thing for everybody? No, okay. Like that was kind of cool to me in maps. Um, okay, we're gonna jump and see what my next slide is. Um, this blog post yesterday, um, if you go to maps, or google.com slash maps slash space, what? that called again? It's google.com yep. slash maps slash space. And you know what I did? Is I, that's the link I took. <laughs> Try just throwing a planet's name in front of that. That might just take you to Mercury. I'll relink it when I get out of the slide deck. So do they have like street view of Mars yet? Oh, I'm sure. But <laughs> well, you get the rovers there. Right? Okay. I'm trying to execute some point time so you guys can play, and I will change that link. If you go to learn more, though, it will take you to the blog post. I believe <coughs> this was just me yesterday. Or this is come out. But it's interesting as you jump from one planet to the next. It will, um, it almost gives you some perspective of the distance from the planets are on Earth. But what's weird is this is in Google, what it's weird, it's weird to me that this is within Google Maps and not within Google Earth, because Earth is a planet, right? So, okay. So let's fly from Earth to Venus. My maps. So this is what I would do for the Ragnar account. I would think about creating a my map of where you're going to go. So one of the things you can do is, if, could I have everyone on their mobile device decide where we're going to go on vacation? So if you would type in this link to this Google form, goo.gl. R-A, this is case sensitive, P-K-M-P. And then all it's asking, it should ask you for your name. And tell me where we should go. Again, on the document, that collaborative doc, could you share too? But how are you, I, how are you using my maps? 
we have a unit with our business teacher, a marketing musical tour, and so we plotted out all the places that they go on their tour. On the tour, so you're going to put it into my maps. Breakouts, breakout EDUs, mm -hmm. yeah. So we did a, a civil rights event. So like they mapped and then listed like the big events that happened in the civil rights movement through their mind map. So it was almost like creating the worksheet on the spreadsheet, like their formal worksheet, and then they could actually plot it out. It's super easy. So they're gathering the information, like I just did, through a form, mm -hmm. and then uploading. Yeah, they just did it on the spreadsheet. On a spread. Oh, they just did it directly on the spreadsheet. Because they had like. What was the main event? What were the key things that happened? Like what typically was on that formal worksheet? They just put it on the spreadsheet then and then map. Oh, it. and then took that over to the map. Yeah. Huh. Anybody ever done any? We were talking about literature, so you could do that storyline of a book as someone was traveling. So what you can do is go to buy maps in Google Drive. So you guys have answered this. I have a few locations. Huh. And where should we go? So I'm going to go to my maps. And I'm going to create a new one. Who has not ever created a new one? Do you remember that? So this is new. So if we create a new my map. You can also do this through Google Drive. My maps are stored in Google Drive as one of your files in there. If you import and add a layer, And I'm just going to go get that from Google Drive. Fetching. This walks you through it. And I'm going to say, select the column where you want the place mark to go. So I want it to go on location. Continue. And then what do you want to be show up in the pop-up? So I'm just going to do a name. So this is where, if you wanted to, if you wanted to give some more reasoning, like what Emily was talking about with her kids, saying this is the location, here's what happened at this point, you could actually put a paragraph text in there if you wanted to and have a little bit more pop up. So there are all of the places that people said they wanted to go. And let's see, who else picked Iceland? Kyle then. Um, John did. My brother was just there last week. Um, so places, did you see how quickly that that map populated? And what I think is pretty fascinating is talking about location too. Is it the exact coordinate um, that you were thinking? What it would happen if you put longitude and latitude in there versus just plopping down? I want to be in Iceland. It's going to plop me. Is it plopping me in the middle of the country? Did it plop me in the capital? Where is it going? So once you have this created, just like in regular, this is Google Maps, you can go in and click on those place markers and edit them. So if I want to, I can click on a place marker and I can adjust the style, the text that goes with it. If I wanted to, I could go add an image and I don't remember where I clicked. But you could go get your own photos if the kids took their own. Or they could go search images to add to this. So, <laughs> lots of high quiet. Pretty cool, pretty easy to do. Um, another website tool that is very similar to my maps is Google Tour Builder. Has anyone seen Tour Builder? Um, differences between Tour Builder and my maps. I feel like this one is like more of maybe you're going to kind of like scrapbook or remember a trip, put links and things like that to share with somebody. Like it kind of presents a prettier package, I would say, than my maps, but not as much map focus, just more. A scrapbook is a great way to describe it. I never forget me to say that, but it's, yeah, it looks a little bit different. It's got that um, kind of that narrative on the side with your image. It's kind of like a flipping pages of a book as you go from point to point versus popping up on a map. So this is Google Tour Builder. Kim Randall does some awesome stuff with Tour Builder and she has, I link to her step-by-step -step directions um, down below so you'll have those. Um, graphically though, you can do pretty, I mean you can do the same kinds of things, just 
I found out this week because Donnie, uh, Donnie tweeted it. You can now go within My Maps um, and Google Maps. You can embed video. Oh, it used to be images, and we wanted to embed video. So when they went to a place mark, you want to watch a video about it. Um, you can do that. Um, I also put uh, Kim's uh, My Map resource down on this page. And here's something that I thought was pretty cool. Some kids did um, Route 66, that path. What was Route 66 um, along the highway and what happened at each place. So they built a My Map and they interviewed people along the way. <laughs> um, so here's who they interviewed, here's what they did at that location. But think about the story that that tells as you go from East Coast to West Coast, or West Coast to East Coast. How, is their, how are their stories different based on their environment and where they are in the map? Okay, I'm going to give you another three minutes to talk about using my maps or just Google Maps in general. Go ahead.
teacher by trade, but some like uh, science, physics, uh, secondary folks kind of geek out about all this data. And as we're starting to talk with kids about problem solving or looking at um, like earthquakes, um, looking at um, global warming, or looking at we're, uh, one of our districts, um, they looked at a creek that was um, slowly drying up. And is it because of um, just a drought? Or is this, um, over time, is it just going to go away? Are we going to lose the creek altogether <laughs> outside um, of town? So looking at some of these patterns and some of this data um, can help tell that story when you can visualize the data. Um, so for those kiddos, I mean, if you saw Python and you saw programming stuff in there, um, you can take this data set and use it within those programs. Now, I'm not going to even try to sound smart, like I know how to do that. I couldn't help you. But what a great opportunity for those kids that do understand that, to have them help um, use that data and start to visualize and problem solve. Now, one of the things I do get as a fourth grade teacher um, is this time lapse right here. And I can actually go look at, um, so this is going to start in Miami where it's going to fly us to, but I can go anywhere. And now that Google um, and these satellites have been keeping data over a long period of time, we can see how Miami, Florida has grown. And what impact is that going to have on treatment plans? Um, the community, what kind of water? Do they need more water towers? I mean, those kinds of questions that you're talking about urban development need to be asked. If you fly, just like everybody who's flown to their house with Google Maps or Google Earth before, you can actually go in and you can do a search um, and you can click on it and go to your town and see it grow. How interesting would this be to look at, like right now with all forest fires, or even going to um, looking at the landscape and how it's changed due to the hurricanes? Where were they? And it's, I don't know how it's not going to be like photos from, yet, or from like yesterday on here uploaded yet, but we can start looking at what do we see on the news versus what's going on here now with satellite imagery over time. Um, if you click down here, or scroll up, you can go to Miami, Australia. Um, if we want to talk about is there really global warming, what's that impact is that having a, on glaciers? Let us know. There is case studies in here, which is kind of interesting to see, hey, how are they using this to tell the story of the um, uh, forest? I'm thinking about uh, rainforests and how that's changed, mapping where animals' habitats are, or even the um, vegetation. So that data is here for us to look at and give us some ideas of how we can tweak that um, for our kids. So I talked to them again about time lapse. Street View um, is the last thing I want to mention. Um, who has played with Street View and put Peg Man before and dropped them down? We um, have done quite a bit with Street View. Uh, I shouldn't say we have done quite a bit. We've done, I've done some, some work with it and played with it. I need to do more. With Street View, you can get these cameras. And this is what um, Buddy Berry's uh, daughter and that team did. So they used a Theta camera, which are about $300. And you can take the pictures and actually make do what Google uh, Maps cars do. Snap those pictures. My recommendation is if you have a phone right now, put Google Street View app on the phone. Because what you can do then is connect your phone. There's a camera on the Street View app. You can connect it. So then it can go right from the camera to your phone. And then what you can do is upload it to Street View. So you can actually publish to Street View as well. Um, just so you know. When you go to Street View, and if I were to go to Google Maps, and let's go to Wrigley Field. <laughs> Peg 
and you pull Pegman down. But what some people don't realize is when you drop Pegman, do you see how there is photos down at the bottom? When, if you've ever noticed, there's photos down at the bottom that are below down here. These photos have been taken to um, of that location. So people are actually contributing to Google Maps on their own. So we've got this view that people are familiar with. Let's go back. What we can do then too is if we are here. Let's go back to the map view. If we go back and we grab Pegman, there's other images down here at the bottom that should be popping up. Of course, when I'm like demoing it not. That will pop up for you that other people are uploading, like with their camera or with their phone to stream view. Another thing I just want to point out really quick and then I will be done, is with stream view, do you see there's the blue circles? I didn't realize my keyboard could do that. Um, there's the blue circles and the yellow circles. Blue circles are inside places. So if you wanted to take a virtual tour of like the inside of your school, you can upload those to Street View as well. So think about taking that camera and doing a virtual tour of the school. We had one of our um, school psychologists take a picture, do a 360 <coughs> picture, put it up in the Street View and share it. Actually, she put it in photos. We could have put it in Street View, but shared it with the kiddo that was going to be new to the school who had autism and wanted yep. to see that before they moved to that school. So a quick click of the camera, upload, and then you've got that 360. Um, I had a student spend a year um, creating a replica of our school in Minecraft. And okay. I don't, I don't know if it's on Street View. I think it's actually connected to Google Earth. Okay. Um, but all of the students can easily find it, and they think it's really cool. But that's another way to share the program globally yes. as well, like their project. My bad. Yeah, just to publish it. It was right here. I didn't touch this. I'm used to seeing it all the time. But to get those images that people can contribute, so they can feel like they're publishing something for others to get to. I know we have to get to the keynote. Um, I have a link there of how to upload to Street View, step-by-step -step process. Um, it really isn't that that cumbersome, um, and you can blur faces and license plates when you're uploading too, so if that's something you're worried about. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day.